So this is where we stopped in our last tutorial. We have a character and we can move the character. And now it's time to animate the character. First up, we have to organize our scene. So we create an empty. We call this empty player and set it to the zero position. Next up, we drag and drop the character and then we can copy the widget body capsule collider controller and player and set it to the player object. So this is how it should look like a widget body capsule collider controller and player here and one level deep, deeper the animator. This is um, to separate the basic animation from the gameplay and this is one of the core concepts you should always do. So we need an animator controller. If you haven't done already press create and animator controller and we will need a mask. So uh, we will call this spline. And then we just drag and drop the player here onto the controller. So we can get rid of everything in this. We sh should just have a plain animator. So I have downloaded some of the animations from Mixamo and now it's time to use them. So for example, uh, I have a jump animation and this jump animation is basically a jump. And what I will do right now is to separate the jump animation. For example, start zero to 10, it's jump start. Then um, we have jump mid from 10 to 11 and jump end from 11 to 30 and the jump mid should be looped. We apply this. Um, we set everything to original and uh, bake the position into the pose and do this with everything and then we are good to go. Let's take our jump start, jump mid, jump air and drag and drop it here. And then we make transitions to all of them so that it can cycle through. Okay, the first con um, transition should be fired as soon as we are jumping. So we will add a parameter called, it's a bool, it's called grounded. So now this is a default entry uh, transition. We can just uh, take it and add some conditions. So we will add some new state. It's a blend tree and this blend tree is grounded. And we will come to this later, but now we set the default state to grounded and add the transition here and there. And now we can add some conditions to it. So if grounded is not true, this means we are starting to go up in the air. Um, the jump start should be triggered immediately. So no, no exit time here. If we are here, the jump start animation should play through the end and then slowly um, transition to the jump mid. This looks very good here. And of course it has an exit time and these are the values. You can either set the values here by hand or just use this tool. Um, the next one should be triggered as soon as grounded is true. And then we we'll go going back immediately. So as uh, a transition duration should be yeah, 0 0.1 second and then we we'll go back to grounded. And then from the end, there is an exit time. So maybe a duration of uh, 0 0.1. And then we are go going back from, from jump end to grounded. So this is how you can use the animations. You just cycle through every time grounded is triggered. And then we have this blend tree. So the blend tree basically blends between animations. So um, let's add some animations here or motion fields. And then we can see what it can do. We uh, have a blend type. The blend type should be 2D freeform directional. This is um, how it should look like then. And I will call this grounded. And then I add some animations to it. Okay, let's add a parameter, a float parameter. We call this position X. 
and the other one is position y. I have to rename it. And um, we should use this parameters here, position x, position y. So why do we need this? Uh, let's come to this now. Okay, this red dot is a, a dot we can set in the code and it will blend between those um, motion fields. So, and these motion fields uh, can be set anywhere. For example, walking, I can set it here, um, walking backward, a little bit backward. Let's imagine here is a character. So, uh, white strafe is here, and this is left strafe here. What is this? Running here and idle in the middle. And here we can see what our character is doing. So, if we are in the middle, then the character just is idling. We go right, the character goes right. If you go left, the character goes left. If you go forward, the character runs, or goes backward. And Unity is slowly blending between those things. To navigate back, you can just use this navigation here. Here you come to the base layer, double click grounded, and you're here in the blend tree. Um, but you can have different layers as well. For example, a rifle layer or a gun layer. So, and what we want to do is we have just a base layer, as it means uh, this is how the character is behaving um, in a normal manner. And a rifle layer, this is um, the character carrying a rifle or a gun. So the spline is uh, just for um, the mask, so we can use this character here, this avatar, import skeleton, and you can choose which of these um, bones you would like to use as a mask, or you can use a, a humanoid, which you can use specifically is specified here in the import. Uh, for example, the animation type is humanoid. You have to use the humanoid. If it's generic, you can use the other one. So. I uh, choose humanoid for all my animations, so I can say um, do not animate anything except the arms, the hands, the IK bones and the head, and maybe the main body part as well. So this is my avatar, and now I can set this avatar here, in this layer, and in this layer, and say okay, override it with maybe a weight of one and then um, the animations from this layer are um, applied to these body parts and everything else for example the, the legs uh, come from this layer here. Okay let's have a, a short look at all the methods and where we should put everything when we have animation cameras and um, position updates. So um, as soon as the scene starts uh, money behavior goes through awake and on enable. So awake one time, on enable every time the game object gets enabled, normally one time. Um, then a reset, then start. So start is called after every uh, every game object is awake and enabled. And then we go through fixed update. It's called zero up to 100 times based on your machine. It's a, a physics engine here. And here we should set every physics value like the uh, velocity and so on. And after that there's update. On update we should normally do the animation. So we should set the animation um, triggers because the internal animation update comes after it. And then right before uh, the output, there's a late update. And on late update, we can set um, positions of the camera and positions of certain object that should be definitely on a certain place, not affected by physics and not affected by any animation. So uh, normally this is the camera setup. So here we go. Uh, we're adding a protected animator and the animator should come from get component in children. Okay, on update we call set bool, then the name of the parameter, grounded, and then the grounded boolean. How do we check if it's grounded? Okay, we will do this later. We already did this in the last tutorial. 
And we have to um, set the one X and one Z. I set it to the velocity. You can't just uh, take the velocity from the rigid body because it's based on the global space and uh, it's depending on the speed. So we reverse it. Um, you see, we just uh, set the velocity here, for example, uh, multiplied it by the speed. So we have to divide it by the speed here and we have to take back the transform rotation. And if you want to take the rotation back, you just use the inverse of it. So grounded, grounded is a protected bool and grounded is already calculated down here. Just to show you that there are many, um, many different approaches to check if the player is grounded. We, you can also use the overlapping sphere on the foot. So uh, the overlapping sphere of 0 0.3. Uh, and then there's one problem left. So um, as you can see here, the character has a position of 0, 0, 0 and a rotation of 0, 0, 0 and it should stay like this. But the Mixamo animations really animates the wood bone and the hip which is root bone and uh, this causes these values to change over time. So I will force them to stay here. We say layout update local position zero, local rotation to the identity, which is basically zero as well. And then uh, we have everything we need. So it's not working correctly. Make sure that you name the parameters here exactly as in the code and that ground is, is checked every frame, otherwise it will look a little bit creepy. Okay, let's check if everything works fine. So as you can see, you can um, just have the animator window and the game window next to each other. You can select the character and then you see it cycles through this grounded. And if I jump, uh, we go through this loop and you can actually see the values like grounded or the run values on the left. You can really see those value tweaking and you can see all the animations blended together. So now you might ask, why do we need those layers? Let me add one line here in the update. So animator set layer weight and this weight is the weight of this second layer, this is the index, and the weight itself. So the second layer is the gun layer and the weight is currently set to zero. If we set it to one, the layer mask is applied and this animation is played. So the upper body part is just um, affected by the gun animation and the rest of the body is just uh, the normal base or default layer. So that's it, that's the basic animation system for our character. I will put you the link down into the description uh, for the GitHub repository. You can download the current commit and there are all the scripts and everything you need, all the assets, the complete project is in there. If you want to see more, just uh, check down the playlist for this tutorial and leave a like and subscribe so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Bye.